Two widows were grieving at neighboring graves for their departed husbands. The North American woman was laying an arrangement of flowers when she realized the Asian woman over there was laying a bowl of soup and some rice. Full of curiosity and void of tact, she asked, when exactly do you expect your husband to come up out of the ground to eat his food? And the Asian woman fired back, right after yours comes up out of the ground to smell his flowers. <laughs> now that story teaches us three things about expressions of sympathy. Number one, they do nothing to practically benefit the deceased. Number two, they exist for us, the living, so we can have a visible expression of our grief. And number three, just because another expression looks a little odd to you, all that means is you got used to doing it a different way. If it disturbs you that I have such a keen fascination with graveside tributes, let me assure you my interest is purely professional. For the last 11 years, I have been a licensed funeral director. Or, as I introduce myself at parties, I'm an underground commodities dealer. I've helped a number of people make final arrangements in my career. Many of them want the following line in the newspaper notice. In lieu of flowers, donate to something. The reason they ask for that, in their words, not mine, is they don't want people spending all that money on something they're going to throw out in a couple of days. When I say all that money, I've searched florists in my neighborhood, and you can't get a sympathy arrangement for under $50. One I'd consider typical is more like 130. Now that really is a lot of money for something that, as I mentioned in point number one, does nothing to practically benefit the deceased. So these people would prefer it if you spent your money helping others instead. Funny thing about death, it makes you reevaluate what's truly important in life. Hashtag undertaker wisdom. But here's the problem with their request. It's almost never honored. Visitors are still bringing thousands of dollars worth of funeral flowers into my home. Because, as I mentioned in point number two, they need a visible expression for their grief. Writing a check is not good enough. So I thought, there must be some way I can satisfy both of these parties. And there is. But I face a major hurdle. Our society needs to get over this idea that flowers are the only expression available to us. If we can do that, it frees us up to create new symbols that give you that visible expression, help others in the process, and actually could be a better way to honor the memory of our loved ones. I'll tell you what I mean, but keep in mind what I said in point number three. Just because another expression looks a little odd to you, all that means is you got used to doing something different. Imagine for a minute I had to make arrangements for a handyman. You all have someone like that in your life, unless you are that person for the rest of us. Picture him, it's usually a man, always tinkering in his workshop. Every time something breaks in your house, you hope he can fix it. What if I said, in lieu of flowers, I want you to go to the hardware store, buy a brand new tool, bring that into my funeral home instead. Because if he was surrounded by tools in life, let's surround him with tools in death. Now after the service, I can take those tools to Habitat for Humanity, who will use them to build new homes for the homeless. Wouldn't that be a legacy your handyman would love to leave behind? Maybe I'm talking about a teacher instead of a handyman. And I said, in lieu of flowers, go buy a backpack, fill it with school supplies. Let's make that visitation room look more like a classroom. After the service, I'll take these backpacks to the Salvation Army. They will give them out to poor kids, and then those kids will carry on that teacher's legacy by having a better shot at a good education. One day, I had to bury a man who loved teddy bears. So we said, go down to the toy store, and in lieu of flowers, buy a brand new teddy bear. And the people listened. There were over 50 teddy bears in that visitation room. Far and away, the most adorable funeral I have ever run. I would say it was unbearably cute. 
But you know the best part? After the service, I got to take those teddy bears downtown to our big children's hospital. Hi there, honey. Are you here all by yourself? You miss your friends, huh? Well, I got someone who wants to keep you company, okay? Yeah, yeah, take him. He's yours. Yeah. Cool app there, buddy. It's from T-Ball. And you can't play because you're here, huh? Well, as soon as you're feeling better, this guy wants to go to one of your games, all right? Yeah, yeah. And as I walked around that children's hospital, I watched 50 very sad pairs of eyes light up. Some kids were extra happy to meet a man who had the same haircut they did. But that moment was possible because one man's family listened to a new idea. And I challenge you, Toastmaster, do you listen to new ideas? Or do you insist we always do things the traditional way? Does it bother you I started back there rather than the more traditional front and center? People have told me it does, but no one can say what's wrong with it. It's just, this is where I expect a speech to start. I expect everyone to do it the same way. No, that is where tradition becomes tyranny and you get trapped. <laughs> because if you only do what you have always done, you can only achieve what you have always achieved. Now, I'm not saying every new idea is a great one. I'm saying no idea is worth holding on to with all your might if you do it blindly. Because only new ideas have the power to change the world. Teddy Bear Man's family changed the world for 50 sick kids because when they got the chance they broke the tyranny of tradition and accepted non-traditional expressions of sympathy in lieu of flowers. Mr. Toastmaster.